Adam Small again from my music masterclass and today we have a sound test review of a condenser microphone. So this microphone right here that I'm talking into is the DC20 from Donner. I would call it a medium diaphragm condenser microphone because it's a 16 millimeter capsule which is a little smaller than most large diaphragms and a little bit bigger than most small diaphragms. First things first, uh, this is a condenser microphone, therefore it needs phantom power. It doesn't have a battery in it, so you're gonna need to have a sound card or a mixing board or something that has 48 volt phantom power to power this microphone. The frequency range on this thing is pretty standard at 20 hertz on the low end to 20 kilohertz on the high end. And in the Donner literature that I read, uh, it states that between three kilohertz and six kilohertz, the microphone is optimizing that frequency range to bring out the human voice. This is a cardioid pattern microphone, uh, no switchable patterns, no bass roll off switch. This microphone costs $49.99 as of the filming of this video, which is very inexpensive. And like most microphones these days, this one comes with some accessories. Came with a shock mount, which is pretty nice. I like it. Um, this metal pop filter, which we'll test and make sure it's doing its job. Um, it came with an XLR cable. Uh, I'm not using it right now, but the cable looked pretty solid. This is a tripod that you can put on your desk if you want to mount the mic over there instead. Uh, right now I have this on my microphone stand. Now, just like in all of our other review videos on this channel, we were sent this product in exchange to make this video. Meaning, Donner sent us this microphone for free in exchange for this video review. But they didn't tell us to say anything specific and we're always unbiased. So we're gonna tell it like it is and at least let you hear what this thing sounds like. So first, let's check out what this pop filter is really doing and if it's working. And let's pretend I'm doing a podcast with random plosive words. I took the pop filter off this thing for now, I am about six, seven inches away from this mic, which is te technically where I would be if I were doing a podcast. I wouldn't want to be closer than this, and I wouldn't want to be too much further away. You could probably go between six and, I don't know, eight, maybe ten inches if you want. You can do all different things. You can do whatever you want. But this is where I'm going to be, and this is a pretty natural distance. Uh, this room is pretty open. There's no foam baffles or bass traps or anything behind my hand it's it goes back so you can hear a little ambience too now i have crafted a perfect sentence that has a bunch of plosives in it just like that plosives pop 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 plosives and i'm going to say it into this microphone i'm going to say it at this distance then i'm going to say it too close and then we're going to put the pop filter on and i'm going to do it again a platypus and a dog bought a kite made of tofu. But, to their surprise, the bean curd toy didn't glide perfectly. A platypus and a dog bought a kite made of tofu. But, to their surprise, the bean curd toy didn't seem to glide perfectly. So as you can see, I put the pop filter back on and I'm gonna say the same sentences over again. First at around six inches and then I'm gonna to go too close again and we're gonna see if they sound any different. A platypus and a dog bought a kite made of tofu. But, to their surprise, the bean curd toy didn't seem to glide perfectly. A platypus and a dog bought a kite made of tofu. But, to their surprise, the bean curd toy didn't seem to glide perfectly. Now I'm going to try to play some random instruments that I have behind me and let's see how this mic picks them up.
So that was a brief sound test consisting of whatever I could reach from my seat here, some random instruments, just so you can get an idea of what this mic sounds like uh, with different instruments that have different timbres. The first thing I want to say is I didn't add any plugins to this signal. The mics were plugged directly into a clean preamp with no coloring artifacts. No EQ is used, no compression, and no noise reduction software. Now, what did I hear when I listened to this microphone back? Well, it's pretty apparent from the very beginning of this video, since I'm just talking into this mic the entire video with no other sound source, that this mic is clean. It doesn't add noise to the signal, which is very good, and a lot of inexpensive microphones are pretty noisy. This doesn't do that. And also, it seems to sound like my voice, which is great because that's kind of the purpose, right? Now, I mainly tested this mic with my speaking voice because I'm not a great singer and I'm not gonna put you through that and I'm also not gonna do that to myself. My fragile ego will be broken if I sing on camera. But from a podcast point of view, from a voiceover point of view, and from a random miking of instruments point of view, I think that this mic is a very, very good value for the money. I mean, for around $50, it's a no-brainer for me. Uh, this is a good, clean mic that I can keep in my, my mic locker. And for any of you who have ever gone to a studio and have seen the huge mic locker or case of mics, it's not because the studio owner or the engineers are hoarders, probably. It's mainly because each mic has its own vibe, and you might pull for a mic on one session that might not work for another session, or vice versa. You might hear a singer and say, oh, this mic is going to complement that singer's voice perfectly. Or there's a horn player or a piano player and you want to go for a different sound on this record than the last. Whatever the case is, it's great to have different options and different sounds and different microphones to pull from. So in summary, this mic will definitely make my mic locker because I think it's a good clean mic and uh, it'll definitely add to my arsenal.